God and to know what God, what the Lord requires of us. That's good. It's a privilege for us to be here today, especially my family, some of my family from Port St. Lucie. They are here with me. Uh, my mom and my sister Darlene is here with me. All right, Praise, Praise the Lord. God. I feel honored to be here in the presence of God to praise the God, praise God, and I can and I can stand up and speaking in front of my family, because the li the life the the life I live at home is the same life I live here. The lives I live here is the same lives I live at home. I'm not afraid to talk to speak the truth, and then when I get home, to say you're not even doing that. Uh, some people. They can preach at the church, but they cannot preach at home because they live a different life. But thanks God for son of God, son of the church, the true church of God. They don't have a double life. We don't live a double life. We're not afraid to speak in front of our family. We're not afraid to speak in front of the crowd. We're not afraid to speak in front of the crowd. We're not afraid to, to afraid anywhere because we, we, we speak the truth and we live the truth. What we're preaching, it's what we're living with God's grace. Uh, we're talking about a series of a study, a series of message we're talking about. We're going to continue on the same series. It's God give you a warning. Are you, taking, are, you taking, are you taking it up seriously? God give you a warning. Are you taking it up seriously? A uh, we uh, start by uh, uh, talking about the definition of a warning. According to the some Bible definition, also the definition of a dictionary, a warning is a sign that something bad is going to happen. And you have to take immediate action to prevent things to be happening. In other words, a warning is a sign they give you before something bad happens to you that you can reverse the course. But you can be avoid the disaster if you take up the warning. Or something bad can happen to you if you don't take it up. Through our day study we do in the past, we show you throughout what you bring people that God give them warning. And some people take up the warning, some of them didn't take up the warning, you know what happened. The first formal warning God gave, uh, God gave that was on Genesis chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. We're not going to go there. We're just going to piggyback you to get you at full speed where, where we are. That was a when Cain, a, a Cain about to slay <coughs> a, his brother Abel, but God told him, why your continent hasn't fallen? Uh -huh. If you are quiet, you shouldn't feel that way. This is today was not for only Ken. It's for us also. That's right. When you're about to do something bad, you know it. You feel bad. Your goodness is fallen. Yeah, yeah. If you're about to do something right, you feel like good about yourself. But we're about to do something when your goodness, your goodness is fallen. You shouldn't feel that way. And God told Ken, sin is like against your door, but you must master it. Today, sin, sin is more prominent than it's ever been. He doesn't accept anybody any age. But it's always like against our door, but we can do something about it. God talk about it, we must master it. That's it. We must master it. He gave us power to do that. If we go in woman, one, uh, woman 6, verse 12, uh, and woman in general, give us get up the power of the blood of Jesus to give you the dominion over sin. Sin no longer have power over us, but we have power over sin. That's right. We have to claim that power. We have to exert that power. Everybody got power, but are they using it, or are they in condition to use it? 
uh, they can put a general and chief of the army. They give you power. You got that power. But are you able to use it? Are you got the authority to use it? They can give you power. They cannot give you the authority. You have to claim the authority. God give every one of us power. Amen. But we have to claim it. Amen. We have to exert that power. You got your power to govern, to domain the world and overstand. But we have to claim that power to do it, to rule over it. For some people, they let sin rule over their life. Got sin of dominion over them. But they got power to change that. The power is within you, within every one of us. We got that power because God gave it to us. Amen. It's us to exist that power. Amen. The, blood of, the blood of Jesus gives us that, the power of sin, the power of every little thing. God gave us that power to do it. We go ahead and talking about. Lot, eh, in, the, in the days of Lot, God sees sin was repeated all over the world. He gave us warning. He sent the angel tell them that. But they repented. God brought fire. We go along and talking about in the days of Noah. From the day in Noah, God gave Noah instruction to construct the ark. Noah was 500 years old. Until the day from Noah 620 years old when they come. Noah preached that time, but no one listened. God keeps giving him the warning. No one listened. What I'm putting that is because <coughs> some people will talk about them over there now. They will say, since they were born, since they were little, they heard God is coming back. It's coming back. That's never happened. It's not true. But Noah preached 120 years old. At least we know that. Yeah. He's preaching the day God gave him to construct the ark, to tell those people the section in common. God, look on, God did look on the, the world. He said the, 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 the calamity of the world was so great. God repented make the world. He tell Noah, tell those people to repent unless they repent. God, Noah preached, preached, preached. 120 the years of preaching. People didn't repent. Today you will see the same thing. They will tell you, sin I born, I heard that, I heard that, I heard that, that's <coughs> not going to happen. Right. But God, on long time. God says he's not lacking on his promise. Come on, bro. Right. It's not. Right. He gives you time to repent. Right. It time, that's his give time to repent. He's not lacking on the promise. It's time. That's the scapegoat. He gives you time to repent. Right. And, um, we go ahead to see one of the town. It, that was Nineveh. Nineveh was one of the towns that was great wicked in front of the Lord. They didn't know the Lord. Lord sent Jonah uh -huh. to preach in the world. When Jonah preached the town, the people repent. Uh, yeah. They take up the warning. God dispelled the city. God wants to spare you. God will the city. God wants to spare you. Amen. He wants to spare you from this wicked world. Amen. But are you up to take the power to do that? You have to repent. we talking again. We continue on this series to talking about if God give you a warning, are you taking it up seriously? The second one thing we're talking about with God work in, that we find that in First John two verse uh, twelve and seventeen. If someone can read that for us, uh, please. Yeah, we read there. Okay, we're gonna First uh, John two verse twelve to seventeen. I write unto you, little children, because of your sins are forgotten you for His name's sake. I write unto you, fathers, because ye have known Him. That is from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because ye have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, because ye have known the Father. 
I write unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I have, I have written unto you, young men, because ye are strong, Amen. and the word of God abideth in you, and ye have overcome the wicked one. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Amen. Amen. Hey, we brought that on the your second part of this. The second one in God give us, we found that on verse uh, six, uh, 15. But before that, God put it general. Uh, first, some people might say, when God was talking, he was <coughs> talking at Cain. You have to rule over sin. But this like, God clearly plain in general. And verse said, he says, I watch unto you little children. He start to categorize them. I watch unto you fathers, the elders on the church, the elders on the world. I want unto you young men. Remember we said when God talking about men, it's called male and female. Basically, God talking about to every one of you. Every one of you. What is the message? What is the warning? The warning is that Lord not the world. Neither do thing that is in the world. If any man love the world, the love is the father is not on him. You know one thing, there's many things I love about God. God can just tell you not love the world, neither do things in the world, and it's done. He doesn't have to give you a reason. But God never do that. He always tells you why. He don't like to say, why, why you tell me don't love the world? God says in verse uh, 7, uh, seven seal, he said, for all that is, the, is on the world, mm -hmm. the loss of the flesh, the loss of the eyes, the pride of life is not of the Father, but, <coughs> but of the world. <coughs> So we know if we go to James, we know all the sins someone can commit it, every single one of them fall onto those three categories. The loss of the flesh. Your flesh want to do is hunt thing. Your flesh want to go out the wall, the way the world dress that the way you want to be dressed. The way the, the world talks that the way you want to be talking. That's the flesh. But that's why God called you not, do not love the world. Neither do things love and the world. This is the message now. A lot of people want to do what the world don't want to do. They want to act like the world. They want to conform to the world. God says do not conform to the present year, present ages. Mm -hmm. Now Christians come we are more than as Christians. They want to conform. And God give you that warning. Do not love the world. Where is your love? Where is it? Come on. We know the Bible tells you in Matthew chapter 33. Where is your treasure? Where is your love? Where is like, like where your treasure is? That's right. Your treasure is. Right, Our love is still in the world. If your love is for the world, you're going to act according to the world. But uh, when you act according to the world, everything about Christ is going to be difficult. It's going to be too hard. It's going to be too hard to talk right. It's going to be too hard to dress right. It's going to be too hard to, to even go to church. It's going to be too far. Because your love, and the, your love is not in Christ, it's on the world. But everything on the world is going to be easy but because that's where your love is. It doesn't matter if your next man coming up is going to play on Miami. <coughs> people will go. Hey, I was talking, my friend is talking about work. Hey, this is a Justin Bieber, not my friend, people I work with. Justin Bieber coming to Orlando, I don't know, sometimes this year or sometimes coming up to find a ticket 
is three thousand dollars to find a ticket. People going crazy. There is no there is a lie, there is no ticket available. That's where their heart is. Look at us today. It's free. That's cost you zero zip nada. Look at us. Where is your heart? Where is your heart? How our heart is fixed on the thing above or on the thing on the on the earth? Where is our heart? The boss us the <coughs> boss tell us to come on, on work at seven fifteen. At seven fifteen we line up in front of the clock to to get there. And Sunday we're not even presented to church. Where is our heart? Where is our heart? Right. Thank you, Lord. We're going to continue today and talking and on the series. This one is personal. It will get closer to home. Because, because a lot of people of here probably was here before, among us. Some of them are no longer here. But the Bible gives a strong warning to that. If that happened to you. I uh, remember a, a, the our subject today is God give you a warning, but the warning is more concerning about backsliding. We'll talk about the danger of ba backsliding. And we'll talk also about that you can be sitting in here and already long gone backslide. And we're going to see some characteristic of backslider. A, I remember Pastor Driven Lord was preaching and, talk, and, and preaching one message one day. He said, some people at, have on their bucket list to backslide. For what reason? He said, but pa Pastor Lord talked about one of the ladies talk about want to backslide because he want to get back at people. He want to raise. <laughs> I don't know if you remember that. That's what he want. He want to. He want to do that. He wants to raise. Yeah, that says the finger. Yeah. No, no, I'm not gonna admit that at other people when they talk. <coughs> That's what in the bucket list to backslide. What is in your bucket list to backslide? <coughs> Some people want to give answer back. Want to show their way. Want to show I'm capable of doing that too. On, what is in your list to backslide? Oh God! But let me tell you something. Come on, tell it. Whatever it's on bucket list, it isn't worth it. That's right. That's right. It's not worth it, bro. Some people backslide because the power bill was 1.4 billion dollars. Yeah. A lot of people on the lottery line paying, paying, they spend money. People call them Christ, they self Christian. They lost their money. They back, their heart is backslide because $1.4 billion, they don't even win. But they lost their soul. Even did you win the $1.4 billion, what that's worth? What it's worth you? Nothing. All misery. The more money you get, the more misery, the more trouble you get. You cannot try to hide yourself for people, for friends, for family. You cannot sleeping because this charity is going to call you a ghost. This charity is going to call you right. This charity is going to call you right. You have, you have to be on hiding place. Change address to address. Go to the city to, to take you off the to, 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 to public record and they will find your way. He, he, God says, what profited a man to gain the whole wall and lose his soul. What's profited you one day? $1.4 billion. <coughs> and you spend a eternity, a eternity on hell. Right. What's God. that profited you? My God. Let's look what the Bible said about backsliding. Let's not talking about us. Let's not talking, let our way talking. Let the Bible talk to you. Okay. 
Okay. Let's open our Bible and Second Peter. If you can get it on the screen for us. We said when you are in the word of God, we're not in a hurry. We're going to take our time to explain to you. For you to understand what God requires of you. Uh, we're going to open our Bible and Second Peter 2 verse 20. And 22, I think we might read the verse 19 also. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 20, and going to verse 22. But if you can, you can read that for us. For if after <coughs> they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome. And the, la the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. For it hath, bring, hath been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it turned from the Holy Ghost, holy commandment delivered unto them. But it, but it is happened unto them according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sore that was washed to her wailing in the mire. Amen. Let's, we, we're going we're gonna to take your time to look at it, but let's emphasize one key thing. Look at, look at the comparison the Bible make between the backslider and the dog. Have you ever seen that? Yes. Have you ever seen a dog? <laughs> For me, then go back to it. In front of the, in front of God, even in front of the whole world, that's the way the backslider look like. It's what we do. Basically, literally, what you done when you backslide. Yeah. Tell you. Whatever your plan is, whatever the plan you get, whatever what it is, if you plan to backslide, it is not worth it. <laughs> Let's go in detail now to it. He said, the whole chapter talking about is that false thing is about warning. Warning. The whole chapter talking about God give us warning. Uh, but this verse bring it to home because uh, there's people, a lot of people among you, you know them. Like that. They were sitting there with you. But they're no longer here. Maybe they let something go through their heart. We see, he said, <coughs> For if they, if they have escaped the pollution of the world to the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you know, the, the, the world is polluted by all kinds of crazy things. Uh -huh. The homosexuality, the my way, right. the smoking, the lying, the drinking. Yeah. Come on. The polluted of the world. Polluted by the world. But when you receive the knowledge of God, God deliver you from that. Because friends, right, God deliver can give you the power. Right. They give you the power, and you claim the authority to deliver you over whatever what what is what you are putting on the wall. God give you the power to do it. But some of you or some of us get go back and entangle, and their F and their end, and the later end is worse than the beginning. If you are experienced, have you ever seen? A backslider. Of if you know one, have you ever seen the life when they save and they love the backslide? Right. If they talk to you, ask them about their experience to said, to tell you how miserable they are. Those people put themselves a slave, they become in captive. Right. And one thing Pastor always preach. Once you heard about the knowledge of truth, your life will never be the same. I don't care if you backslide, 
but the truth that you heard is not gonna still kicking and ticking on your mind. That's right. Either you change or you put yourself in a torment. What is worth it to lose your soul? Amen. Isn't it worth it? Is anything in the world can you make can make you back to your own? I don't want to be gross, but that's why the Bible said it. I'm gonna say it yeah. to make you go back to your own woman. Right. Make it up. Eat it. Come on, brother. Look at your life. Look at it. You know your life. Let me tell you. I, I don't know if that told that before. There is three people. I don't know if they're people, but there is three entities that know you. The devil know you. In part. It doesn't know all of you. It cannot know all of you. You know yourself a little bit more. You know yourself a little bit. The devil know you. God know all. Looking at your life. Looking at your life. Look at it to see what in your life can separate you to the love of God. To make you go back to your own vomit. Look at your life. Is it the way I talk? Is it my love for money? Is it my love for the thing of the world? Is it sickness? Is it the business of the world? Look at your life. Mm -hmm. Pinpoint that thing. Pinpoint it. Search for it. Mm -hmm. And crucify it. That's it. But you know what, something? The danger of that, the world today is the condition we live in, the age we live in, the modern as Christian world that they call it. I'm a modern as Christian. They call themselves Christian, but they want to do whatever they want to. If you turn back on Proverbs 14, verse 14, if you can read that for us to see something. I'm going to read the first part. Proverbs 14, verse Proverbs 14, verse 14. Butter and heart should be shall be filled with his own ways. And a good man... Okay, that's what we need, the first part. Uh, you get it on the... Proverb 14, verse 14. Proverb 14, verse 14. We're going to read the, the, the first part. The backslider and heart shall be filled with his own way. The Bible talking about backslider and heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's mean people among you now, sitting here among you, sitting beside you, but they had already departed from God. Amen. But those people feel their own way. Amen. What about they feel their own way? They don't respect the church schedule. They don't respect the time schedule. They don't take counsel. They feel on everybody doing that. Oh, what? What are you to tell me what to do? What are you to tell me don't dress like this? What are you to tell me don't talk like this? What are you to tell me to not go in there? There's a lot of church that preaches now that you can live the way you want to and be called yourself a Christian and be still saved. But we know the truth. Right. We know God says, Be ye therefore perfect. Right. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. We know God requires perfection. Right. Yeah. If we look back in Deuteronomy, when about to offer a sacrifice, God tells them what kind of offering that is accepted. It's the same God, it doesn't change. And we know God says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the message of God, to offer your body like a living sacrifice, 
holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable, reasonable service. So that make us thank, that that make us thank, that make us known that we cannot live the way we want to live, any way we want to live and still call ourselves Christian. We cannot do whatever we want to do Come on. Right. and it's still take we save. Come on. You know what's going to happen to those people Selling. who think that? Let the Bible talk to them. Let's, let's go first before then in Ezekiel 33 verse, uh, uh, 33 verse 31 and to see those. And, uh, and then we go to Matthew 7 verse 23 and 20, 20, 21 and 23. To see what's happened to those people, we thank. They can live the way they want to, do whatever they want to do, and thinking about what they save. Ezekiel 33, verse 31. Praise the Lord. Ezekiel 33, verse 31. And they, and they come unto thee as the people cometh, and they sit before thee as my people, and they hear my, and they hear thy word, words, but they will not do them, for with their mouth they show much love, but their heart goeth after their covetousness. You see what Ezekiel tells us. This is what we're talking about: the backslider and heart. They still come to church. They come as their people come. Sure. They say, God love us. We love God. Come on. They say, they, the Bible said they said that in their mouth. Yeah. Everybody now to it. If you go to the world, even the world is just puffing up the cigarette, but they say, God love you. Yeah. God bless you. God love me. Some of them on the church don't have their cigarette, but on their heart and their action, it was not the people with the cigarette. Said They come as my people come mm -hmm. and sit as my people sit. They hear the same word of truth, but they don't do it. Right. Right. They don't do them. Right. They still live the way they want to live. Right. They say in their mouth, we are Christian. Mm. Wow. I'm saved like you saved. Wow. But when you look at their fruit, yeah. when you look at their action, yeah. when you look at the way they talk, yeah. with the way they conduct business to others, Come on. the way they treat others, Amen. the way they dress, the place they go, where their pleasure is, is not of God. But they still call themselves Christian. Some of them will make it modernized Christian. The age of deception. But Look at what the Bible said can happen to those people. Look at Matthew 7, verse 21 and 23. Matthew 7, verse 21 and 23. Look at those. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Continue. Many will say and say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name have many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you worker, you ye that work iniquity. I never knew you. I knew you not. If you don't have to hear those three little words from God himself in the final day, the time is now.
I don't know whatever plan you got. If you plan to backslide, to go back to the bandage of the wall, the wall is still fighting to, to get you back. Your flesh is still wants you to go back. Remember the people of Israel? Are you remember them? I remember their story? After many great wonders, <coughs> God done for them. God opened the Red Sea. God saved them from 400 years of slavery, walking, and they killed their firstborn and things like that. After 400 years of slavery, God delivered them. God opened the Red Sea for them. Do you know what they want to come back to the bondage and slavery? Because there was not no meat. They're complaining about all we got in the desert, all we got is manna. Yeah. Is manna, is manna. There was plenty of meat of Egypt. We would rather, we would rather be done on Egypt. That's what they want to go back to their own vomit for that. They, they forget about all the slavery. They have to work. Their work is double to work, uh, to beat it. They're not thinking about that. Right. But they just talk about a little, a little piece of meat right. to satisfy the flesh. That's it. That's it. They want to go back. They murmur to Moses. They want to go back for that. Oh, there was plenty, plenty meat of Egypt. There was not only meat in Egypt, but they forgot it. The devil will make you forget it. That's what they will want you to do today. Yeah, if a man wants to forget about how bad sin is, that's tell it. you about just a little thing. Right. A little thing God can provide for you. To draw you back. This is what's on the bucket list. Little meat. To go back to Israel. To go back to, 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 to the bondage. To go back to slavery. To go back to the own vomit. What is on your list? What is on your list that want to draw you back? To is it a good job? Is it too busy in the world? Is it your friend? Is it I don't want my friend to be seeing safe? Or can I go out to some of the friends? Don't, they don't see me cool anymore? Is it? The devil will make you all the trouble, all the headache, yep. all, 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 all those things. Uh, have you seen people drunk? One time I was watching people, they drunk and just fall on the street. There was, when I was living, when I was living in my hometown, there was too many people drunking, but there is a guy who used to be drunk all the time. When he's drunk, other people on the, on the, on the ground. Sometimes he's sold his own self and defecated his own self and roll over it all over his mouth and things like that. And sometimes some people go on their pen and they do that for him and they just like roll on it because he's lost conscious. Right. You know it's the same thing about you when you backslide. Okay. Right. Come on, right. <coughs> you f you, they forget about that. But they think I can just have a drink. Okay. Some people that I can just enjoy a drink. Yeah. And they try to backslide over that. Right. Oh, wow. Looking at your life. Looking at it, God will give you warning. Yes. Taking up with you. Amen. This is specific for us here that save. We're not talking about with people that's like that's on the wall. This is for you, Amen. for me, on you who receive the knowledge of the truth. Amen. We know the love of the truth. Right. What is it can separate you from the love of God? What is it can make you go back to your own vomit? Looking at it. If you look for it closely, you can find it. What is it can make you go back to it and find it and crucify it? Because if you think, if you think you can live the way you want to, do whatever you want to, like it, like it says in Proverbs 14, verse 14, the bastard in his heart feels his own way, 
get your way, dominate you, and then think you're going to be saved, when you get there, when you get the day of judgment, God will say, depart from me. You that walk in iniquity, I knew you not. And at that time, it's too late. It's going to be too late. There is nothing more you're going to do. You can, you can look for all the squeezes you can give. You can, you can look at how many services you've been through. You can look at how many good deeds you've done through. But God was, I never you knew you. Because your heart was full with your own ray. Because you deceive. You think you can serve God the way you want to. Thinking about, like my, my the brother brought her now, you think about, we can enjoy the pleasure of the world, and at the same time, thank you, save. There is a separation. God tell us, do not love the world. Neither do things that is in the world. If someone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Thank God. I will have show the love of the Father or the love of the world. Are your actions show the love of the Father or the love of the world? Are the way you act, what is reflected? to? Look at that thing. Mm -hmm. The guy said to Jesus, he come to Jesus, he asked, what should I have done to be saved? Right. And the guy says, God there says, you have to do this, you have to do that, you have to do that. Yeah. But he says, for my youth, from the whole thing, for my youth, I always done those things. But God tell him, there is one thing you lack. And that one thing. He looks at. Look at in your life today. Look at that one thing that you lack it. Look at that one thing make you can uh, cannot look at that one thing make you not get closer to God. Right. It might be not a big thing. It might be you care too much about the Lord. It might be you, you spend too much time on Facebook. Too much time over your phone. It could be that thing separate you from the love of God. Looking at it and crucified it. One thing. Look at your life. Backsliding is not worth it. Right. Nothing of your soul. <coughs> Look at that thing and crucify it. May God bless you. Thank God. Let us all stand. I pray that backsliding is not on our bucket list. I pray that's not in our plan and in, in our desire. I pray our desire is, is uh, okay, dream. I pray our desire is. I pray that we have the desire that uh, to, as Peter said, Lord, to whom shall we go? Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Have, have you been contemplating backsliding? Has backsliding been just on your mind that maybe I should try the world, uh, uh, just see what's out there and, and come back? And I can always come back to the church, and I can always come back to God. How about a young people? Do you really want to stay saved? Do you really want to stay saved? Do you really want to amen God, give God your whole life, your whole heart? What is it going to take for you, amen, to, 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 to have that desire just nailed down into your experience that no matter come what, what come what may, whatever pressures come from school, whatever pressures come from the community, whatever pressures come from the world, I'm not going to give up. I'm not going back. I'm not quitting. I'm not going to backslide. I'm not going to try it one time. I mean to make heaven my home. Is that your desire? 
Amen. Love not the world. The brother brought out. Lord, I don't want to have no desire for the things of this world. Lord, I want to come to, to the altar this morning. Check my heart to make sure my heart is set on the things of God. In order to live for God, the brother brought it out so beautifully, so plain. Came like a slow rain this morning, just so plain. That we can't be religious and be saved. We can't sit here with backslide in our heart. And out of our hearts, our heart is someplace else. It's going after the covetousness of the world. But we're here praising God and going through the formalities. We don't want to go through formalities this morning. We want to have this thing real. Are you saved? Are you saved? Jesus came to seek. He came to save those that are lost. Are you saved this morning? Can you say that my name is written in the Lamb's book of life? Can you say that I know my name is there? Can you say?